So I chose to do my project on the Google file system, and this is just the file system that Google uses internally to store and access all of its information. So what is the Google file system? The Google file system is a file system created by Google to provide efficient, reliable access to data using large clusters of commodity hardware. Now, um, commodity hardware or commodity computing uses a large number of parallel computing components that are low cost and low performance. Um, when I first started thinking of Google's file system, I was thinking of um, really large, powerful machines that did a lot of computation. But in starting this research, notice that you know it's a bunch of small machines all running Linux, all really low level and uh, they all just work in parallel. With this practice, it sort of just turns the network into one big computer, turning each machine into a processor and like a data, uh, data storage device. So using all of these components together makes one of the things that makes Google so quick. Um, Google uses large files that are difficult to manage with a standard file system. That was sort of the need to create a new one. These data sets tend to be in like multiple terabyte range, so uh, really hard to overwrite. And the first fully released version of the Google file system was known as Colossus in 2010. So the goals of the Google file system, uh, the first being pretty obvious is just performance. Um, and that sort of goes in hand in hand with that parallel computing. Um, being able to use the thousands and thousands of machines that they do, they're able to get um, pretty quick times for reads, writes, opens, and closes, and stuff like that. Uh, next is scalability. With a network as large as Google's, scalability is one of those main goals because the system shouldn't get worse as it gets bigger. And since it's defined as the ease of adding capacity to the system, scalability is definitely one of the things that's most important to Google's file system. And reliability, of course, is a main concern of any search engine um, and any file system in general. Um, and that's what, sort of what you expect out of Google is to be reliable. One of the ways that Google the file system accomplishes this is uh, redundancy, and we'll get into that a little bit. So some of the design ideas behind the Google file system. First, we'll look at some of the API calls they have. They have a similar API to other file systems, uh, a lot of the ones that are super important. So create and delete files, open and close, read and write. Um, and there's also a couple that are specific to the Google file system, like Snapshot, uh, Snapshot, which creates a copy of the file or a directory tree at low cost. That creates, on standard, three replicas of each of the files that are created and stores them in different chunks, um, which is th that redundancy part of the Google file system. And uh, up, one of the functions is append, which allows clients to add information to an existing file without overriding previously written data. Obviously, having to overwrite previously written data with data blocks that are so large can take a lot of time and a lot of resources. So this is one of the important things that the Google file system has. This is the big picture of the architecture of the system. Uh, there's a single master that is accessed by the clients. And this is where a lot of the uh, computation is done. So contact and, and requests to the master are pretty min minimal to eliminate a lot of that overhead. So a lot of the, all the reads and writes are done down in the lower level systems, uh, thus making the process a lot quicker. The files in the system are divided into 64 megabyte chunks with a unique chunk handle that sort of acts as the chunk ID. The chunks are pretty similar to the idea of blocks in a regular file system, but obviously much larger to store this, this big of data. And chunk servers store chunks locally in the Linux file system. So those are those down here um, that store each of those chunks just locally using the Linux file system. So we'll sort of give an example of what a read would look like using this paradigm. Um, and it all starts with the client. So the client uh, translates the file name and the byte offset, so like the size of the file specified by the application, into a chunk index within the file. And then it sends master a request with that information. The master gets that request, does a little bit of computation, and then replies with the chunk handle and the locations of the replicas it created using that snapshot function. Then the client caches that information um, as the key of sort of what they're going to be searching for uh, in the chunk server. Then the client sends a request to one of the replicas down in the chunk server with the chunk handle and the byte range within that chunk. So basically just being able to find the file they're looking for within that chunk. And once that information is cached by the client, any further reads or writes of that chunk are um, basically require no further interaction with master. So again, that sort of eliminates a lot of that offset created by interact with master each time to read or write the same piece of information. Um, then it would obviously be more costly and, and more timely. So once that information is cached within, uh, within the client, then all the reads and writes are done locally within that chunk server. 
So that's sort of how this diagram looks. And that, that's just a quick run through of what the Google file system looks like. So I hope you have a good day.